Friends, welcome to my workplace for hands-on FACO and SICS training. This is a very hard cataract. In this case, I am going to do double SICS. Double SICS means two SICS wounds are placed side by side and only one suture is placed at the junction of these two SICS wounds. The wound appears like the letter V. In this case, peritomy has been done for about two and a half clock hours. Now, after quarterly, this is one SICS wound. This is another one. Two SICS wounds are placed side by side and the wound looks like the letter V. This blood vessel is not sacrificed in the cautery. And now, after reaching the proper depth of about half thickness, the crescent blade is used for making the sclerocorneal tunnel as we do in SICS. This is the sclerocorneal tunnel of the right side and now we are going to the left. If we are at the proper depth, the thickness of the wound is good. There will be no premature entry. Now as we reach the edge and we go into the cornea in such a way that the inner incision is little bigger than the outer incision. So cornea scleral tunnel is made. At this point we are not going to enter into the anterior chamber. We are not going to open this wound. Now this is a side port at around 8.45 o'clock. And now the anterior capsule is stained with tripan blue dye underneath an air bubble. When we do so underneath an air bubble, the staining is very good in a short time. This is adrenaline to keep the people dilated. Since the nucleus is very hard, we need a large rexus to prolapse the nucleus into the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Now a 26 gauze bent needle called a cystitum is used to do the rexis through the side port. I am going anti-clockwise for on 80 degree this capsular flap is pushed and now this on 80 degree it is pulled towards the wound of entry of the needle. Size of this rexis is about 6 millimeter and hope this is okay for this hard nucleus. Now the sclerocorneal tunnel is opened. We cut tissue when we make the forward movement so that we get a very nice corneal valve. In this case, I measured the size of the wound with this caliper. It was 9.5 millimeter. And now, hydrodissection is done with 27 Gauss cannula and BSS. Capsule or cortical adhesion was formed in this case, and I had to spend some time to make the nucleus free. Ultimately, the nucleus rotated and now visco is injected. 
And now to prolapse the nucleus, I used two hooks. Push the nucleus, one hook goes behind the nucleus and the other one rotates the nucleus and it comes in the anterior chamber. Now care has to be taken to protect the corneal endothelium. So inject visco first in front of this lens mass so that the endothelium is nicely protected. And now I take irrigating vectus, go behind the nuclear mass and deliver the nucleus. See how, how big is the nucleus. During delivery of the nucleus, a piece of iris tissue got pinched and the people be became small immediately. So now I have to manage this case with this small people. First I remove some cortex from the south side port area. And now I go through the side port and remove the rest of the cortex. We have to be very gentle in removing the cortex because genuine may be weak in such cases. So cortical cleanup is done and now the entry chamber and the capsular bag is filled up with visco. And then a PMMA lens, Liberty lens from Upper Sami Associates goes into the capsular bag. The leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is placed in the bag in this way. And now, some more visco. Now, only one suture is required at the junction of these two SICS wounds, that is, at the apex of the V shaped incision. And this is the suture is tied. The suture should not be very tight nor very loose. Optimum tension should be there. This suture will prevent indu induction of astigmatism, though the size of the wound is large, nice 9.5 millimeter. And the healing will be very good because the opposition of the two margins are very nice. Now I will put two releasable sutures on either side. Now I am checking whether this wound is stable or not, whether I need any more suture or not. After forming the entry chamber through the side port, I find that the intraocular pressure is on the higher side and no leakage from the wound. So I don't need any more suture. Now I clean the viscoelastic substance nicely. I go behind the lens and remove the visco. Form the entry chamber nicely. And now two releasable sutures. This is one on the right end of the peritomy. In this case, the cleaning of visco from behind the eye well, that is from the capsular bag has not been shown, but it was done. This is 
formation of some chemosis with subconjunctival gentamicin and dexamethasone. The superior transpiridal suture is removed and then the conjunctiva is advanced and the releasable suture on the left end of the main of the peritomy is placed. Cautery is not foolproof and cautery destroys cells which I do not like. So, releasable suture is very good. See the post op pictures. These are the post op pictures after 24 hours. Cornea is clear, no corneal edema at all. Anterior chamber is absolutely quiet. Intraocular pressure by non contact tonometry is 14 millimeter of mercury. There is subconjunctival hemorrhage postoperatively, but it is going to be all right within 2 or 3 weeks. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will encourage you to do double SICS in very hard cataracts, rock hard cataracts. Just put on suture at the junction of two SICS wounds and astigmatism will be minimal or nil.